you have a Facebook page or Instagram or, okay, we all do, right? What you need to know is that those will be searched by principals now. And you are now in a very different place than you were yesterday. So that what you need to do is go through your social media websites and you check those extremely carefully because they will be scrutinized by every school that you're in, by every parent that is got you in their child's classroom. They will be definitely looked at when you apply for jobs. So now's the time to go in there and make sure that it is what you want it to say and look at it through the lens of someone who's looking to hire you to work with children. Okay? Okay. Wonderful. Um, checkpoint class? Yep, we just handed out everything Excellent. there. Excellent. Um, and we'll look at URSA online here in a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone, so here's another uh, little rabbit hole to go down. Um, throughout the, the program, you're going to have a couple hurdles you have to jump through with paperwork, and this is really the first one. It's called EDFU 125. It is a zero credit class. You actually do have to register for this class. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And then you're going to do a little scavenger hunt with this document. Everything here except for one item is, is printed out here in this document that you can just turn in. You're going to um, go ahead and on the left side do the checklist as you, do, as you find your, your items and then we check it in here on the right. I think I'll be collecting it on up here in the right corner Friday, May 11th. Um, so, the first thing is an oath and consent form. So that's these first two pages inside. That's going to basically be you stating that you are in good standing to work with children. If you have a felony or a misdemeanor, you're going to need to include that paperwork with this. If you have a felony, you probably going to want to email Dr. Ingo Bretson tomorrow and tell her a little bit more about it. Um, but in short, this is the documentation that, this, that UNC and the state of Colorado use regarding licensure. If you have any concerns about that, please do talk to us. Okay. Um, the next page is the major content approval form. And completed by student is number one up here. Um, you'll do your student name and your bear number. And I've already checked the elementary PTEP graduate. That is professional teacher education program. This is you getting into that. And then also um, EDFE 125 clearance sought down at the bottom. And then if you want to save Rosanna a couple of minutes, here's her last name. This is a test. <laughs> I remember this from your application for the job. <laughs> <laughs> Which you knocked out of the park. Ingley Brett's song. <laughs> okay, and then, so there's that. She'll sign it, well, but, but I'll get it first and give it to her. She won't sign it until you give it to me and I give it to her after, and she'll sign it then. Then um, we've got this... Thing that you have to prove that you're registered for EDFE 125. So I have the directions on how to log on to DegreeWorks and to print out. DegreeWorks is kind of the way most, usually undergrads navigate their undergrad program. For you, you won't use DegreeWorks very often because it's a cohort. You go through all the scope and sequence of curriculum together and you don't really have any deviation on that. So what you're going to see once you've registered for it on here is that it's in progress. So if you just print that out, staple it to the back of this packet, and the last thing is on the last page, the Education Canada Acknowledgement of Professional Teacher Education Program Requirements, signed on the back, turned in Friday, May 11th. Come early because class starts at 5, and usually there's a, a line of some people at 4.50. So come, come a few minutes early if you can. Right, you will have a class on May 11th, so that's why it's due that day. But come or early even the week said. before. Or even you, better. as soon as you have this filled out and ready, you can turn it into John anytime. Are, are your office hours going to be on Friday here? Yep, Fridays. Okay. I'll be so here. John will be here till 5 on Fridays every, whenever you have class. So as soon as you get this filled out, you can turn it into him and you're done. Okay? Yep. If we look at page 22, these are mandatory dates and deadlines. And this is just a one page wonderful summary that John puts together for all of the different cohorts. You're going to be interested in all the green and only the green. Uh, dates here. So your due date for your checkpoint packet is Friday, May 11th by 5 o'clock. So you already knew that because it was at the top of that page. Your praxis, um, this says recommended taking it by August 15th. I promise you you're going to want to do it long, long before that. So be sure that you get that done. Uh, call orientation, 
This is when we're going to be talking about the practicum. You're going to know what school you're in. You're going to know what teacher you have. You're going to know what grade level you're in. And then you're going to know who your supervisor is. But we're also going to have the student teaching coordinator from Greeley down here to talk to you about student teaching. And that date is Thursday, July 19th from 5 to 7 right here in this building. So put that, that's a very important date for you. Uh, you're going to get another packet of paperwork similar to this one later on that's going to have some different information in it. This gets you ready for student teaching. That packet is due Thursday, September 6th. Student teaching orientation meeting. We're going to have a, a full handbook just on student teaching. And that will be delivered to you and talked about on November 28th between 1 and 3 in the afternoon. That's when we'll do that seminar. You have a capstone project that is going to be due in April. We're not even going to discuss that right now because you're on information overload as it is. There's going to be a license, uh, the application for your teaching license. That's another thing that's going to happen. Just know we have that scheduled in. You don't need to know about that yet either. And then the final thing, already your final time to come together as a group before your last two classes, is going to be Thursday, May 2nd, 1 to 2.30 in the afternoon. So that's when you're going to have your last hurrah. We are done here with all, almost all of the program except for your last two master's classes. So this is a really great um, page to transfer to your phone or to your calendar, whatever. This is everything you need to know. And like Roseanne said, Denver is in green, but there's a couple universal ones that are not highlighted. One that um, I think we didn't do is the practicum application survey. So that's, that's actually the first thing, and that's going to be Sunday, April 8th. Thank you. And that's where you're picking your, your um, practicum schools. Okay. Any questions before we get into, uh, let me just talk about the very last pages. This is a wonderful rubric to give you an idea of what do, what do we expect from a professional student teacher? Um, professional dispositions, what are, the, what, what are those kind of behaviors? What do they look like? What do they not look like? And what you have here is a rubric that's going to really help you see these are the kind of teachers that we're looking for, these are the kind of behaviors we want in your student teaching and in your practicum and in your classrooms as you're doing your work. Okay. Any last minute, any questions before we go to your schedule? <laughs> I'm yeah, I cut all the stories, right? Um, okay. Okay. Um, so, everyone, a couple things to look at on the web page. Um, the unco.edu homepage is helpful for a couple things, one of which is this search tool. Um, underneath that is the A to Z index. So, if you are looking for, um, like, um, hopefully not academic probation, but it's, it's all, you know, you can do S for school teacher ed, um, F for financial aid. I'm gonna go to E for extended campus, and I'm actually gonna email you uh, this link of your cohort webpage tomorrow, so you don't necessarily have to remember how to get there. Um, but you're a current program student in extended campus, and we'll go to, um, let's see here, skip down too much. Oh yeah, um, so your program page. All right, and you probably are aware that UNC uh, was um, designated as Colorado's Teachers College in 1889, so we have a lot of programs within the school teacher ed, um, and these are all programs I get to work with, which is always kind of fun. Um, Denver Cohort 22 is your group. Uh, 20 and 21 are concluding student teaching right now, and they'll have their online classes this summer. But here's your program webpage, and this is really what all you really need to know. We didn't even have to sit here for the last two hours. You could have just done this and probably been good to go. Um, there's Dr. Engelbretson's contact information in the center, and then on the right, you're going to see everything from bear mail to bear number, um, Canvas, student supporting Canvas, um, URSA, which is Latin for bear, um, and that's that electronic portal that Adrena went over. Um, there's that library support and so on, tech help, all that other good stuff. Okay, so regarding um, your spring 2018 courses, um, here they are, and um, you will, um, why don't I just go ahead and show you uh, URSA real quick, oh, not help, um, URSA account login. So you'll start here, you'll, you'll do a user, actually sorry, you do a um, account activation if you haven't already. Then you begin here 
Um, once you have that, you get to the next step. Again, it says student, financial, employee, and one other one. So you'll, you'll go to student and there will be all the links that you really need to log on and to register. When you're ready to register um, for the semester, you'll pick the semester, and again, it's weird, it's spring of 18, and you're going to see some data fields. And you can register for a bunch of things at once. And what you're going to use to register is the CRN, the course registration number, are the important numbers that you need all the way through the semester here. So you're welcome to register for spring of 2018 now. Um, the summer and fall semesters do not open for registration until April 2nd. So you're, register, you're welcome to register for those then. Um, it, it doesn't matter if you register the, the day that the classes go up because you are guaranteed the classes. It's a cohort. So the only people really in these classes will be you unless there's a miscellaneous teacher that might need some additional professional development or someone we've worked with that might pop in this, in your class. But once you put in all the CRNs for your spring term, you'll just press register and then you will be registered. And then all those will populate into your Canvas and everything else. So any questions about that? <coughs> Excuse me. You can scroll down <coughs> and see the other courses as well. Click, oh yeah, the syllabus. Would you click a different cohort because they'll have this. Oh, there's the syllabus. Yeah, here's one right here. Look at Stephanie. Okay. <coughs> so, Excuse me. On, did you see that, that little PDF sign right there? That's the syllabus and every course will have that on there. And when you click it, you literally get the syllabus for your course. And that's how you know your instructor, your instructor's contact information, what does the course look like, all the assignments for the course are already here. Um, the, the book, books. the textbook is here. So you want to scroll down until you get to the textbook. There's a lot of things that have to be on there already. Um, there it is, right there. So here's your textbook for that 500 class for um, if you have Stephanie Fanislow, and that's what you would go ahead and order. Okay. And one of the biggest um, well things we'd like to change is sometimes if a syllabus is added very late. Sometimes professors might not put it up until they might even expect to just give it to you in class. So that's hard because our candidates are looking, it's not there. If you see that it's not there and you're ready to order your books, just email me and I will um, uh, anonymously let them know that they need to get their books up. That Caitlin said, they better get on the ball. Um, so, so that's helpful, but people want to order their books usually you know, to save on shipping and stuff. So we try our best to do that with the professors. Um, so I will be sending out emails to, to a couple. Oh yeah, actually, we should have said this last night to Roseanne that um, EDL 525 Art Music PE. That's when you get to wear your sweatpants and stuff to class because it's Art Music PE, and they don't have a book. They'll they'll have you bring. What do they do? Bring. Right. They well, I know that was Cynthia's. I don't know that these guys okay. do that at all. Okay. Okay. I'll email them and ask. Yeah. Um, and then there's that zero credit checkpoint. So, so that's basically how you register um, and your program webpage. I'll email you your webpage tomorrow, first thing. And please just remember that you might not have this cohort. <laughs> you might be 23. I don't know. Um, and, and in general, too, the courses are, uh, I'm not sure if you told them this, but you'll have class A the first weekend, class B the second weekend, class A the third weekend, class B the fourth weekend, and then those six credits are done. And then you do the next. So like that through the late spring and summer. So that's where you'll see that. So really what you should probably do is start looking at this, and you received it in your welcome letter too, the actual schedule, but just put them all in an electronic calendar, and you'll be able to start to kind of get a rhyme and reason. And then you put that um, mandatory dates page in there, and then that's it for the next 14 months. So. One thing to know is that in the summer, you have Memorial Weekend off. You also have... Fourth of July weekend off, except for this year there is no Fourth of July weekend because Fourth of July is on Wednesday. So your weekend off is the June 30, July 1st, July 2nd. That is your weekend off this summer. Um, and then all the other weekends except for Memorial Weekend, you're in class Friday night 5 to 9, Saturday 8 to 5, Sunday 8 to 5 until the end of July. You'll finish 18 credits before the 1st of August. 
And, and if you're not familiar with the geographic area of, of Lowry, um, just south of here is, is the whole Lowry Mall area where there's restaurants and stuff. You can, you, you'll get a, like, like a lunch break on Saturdays and Sundays. Or if you'd like to bring your lunch, um, there is a uh, refrigerator in the kitchen and a microwave and stuff. Megan, would you talk a little bit about how you construct a day? Because when you hear that you're sitting in a class from 8 to 5 on Saturday and 8 to 5 on Sunday, that's semi-freaking out information, right? <laughs> so can you just tell them what you might do when you do 